Welcome to Casa de Rav Four. Only the only the best accommodations when fly fishing the the high eastern Sierra. I'm back in the eastern Sierra. Uh, I'm gonna fish uh, for golden trout and brook trout this weekend. So it's two nights in my car. Um, it's a new car. It's the first time I've actually slept in the back of it. Last trip, I, uh, I spent a night, half the night in the front seat and then half the night in the back seat, and that just didn't cut it. So I put down the seats and decided I was going to try to fish in the back. Uh, I mean, try to sleep in the back. Uh, I didn't think it would go well uh, because in the, in the RAV4s, they've got a... There's a there's an engine in the back, and so the seats are, the seats are basically stationary. They don't move. You can just put them down. There's a big hump in the back, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't lay flat. I've got my uh, my thick um, sort of retro twenty year old Thermarest, and it was okay. I mean, I've got a bunch of knives on me. This weekend, in my car, I always carry two knives. Specifically for this trip, I've got my Dark Knight Skinner. My Honey Badger. And for a debut in the Sierra, I've got my OG. Um, I wore the Honey Badger today because I'm going to be, well, in both both places, I'll probably be up above, above 10,000 feet, but um, where I'm going today, it's it's mostly mostly granite, and there's not much, there's not much wood, not much need for a bigger knife. Um, tomorrow, it's a little bit more wooded, so I'll be, uh, I'll be bringing a bigger knife there. I've been sort of um, feeling like I need to, I need to start carrying uh, a bigger woods knife, um, you know, something that's, uh, I don't know, eight or nine inches inches long. Uh, I, I like the uh, the width. I like the width of the OG Grizzly. I like um, I like the choil, um, but you know something more like a a, a dark timber or Apache that doesn't have that you know that upper guard that has maybe um, a wider a wider blade. Um, so we'll we'll see how the OG fares. Uh, I've you know I've been hiking with it at home. Um, once I get it on, I can barely, I can barely feel that it, feel that it's there. Uh, Dave Buzon did a great job with this sheath. Uh, when, you know, one of the things with with the sheaths that I always ask the guys to make me is they either have to have a clip. So Dave Raffensperger made me um, made me this uh, Skinner sheath with the clip because. Um, the, the pants or the shorts that I wear in the summer have um, integral belts, and so I don't have anywhere to, to thread uh, a, a belt loop. Um, or, you know, for my for my outdoor pants, it's typically these old uh, ex officio, and you can see, you know, you know, it's got an integral belt. It does have areas where there's some there's some belt exposed. And so, um, but it, it's not like I can I can thread it through. You can see right here that this you know goes immediately into the pant, and then it just has a little belt loop that I that it's on the outside, and then it goes back into the pant. So what I what I also ask for is snaps, um, and so Dave Puzon made this for me. It's got snaps on the back. And it fits, you know, it fits perfectly. So this is, you know, this is an, this is an excellent sheath. Um, it's, uh, it's very simple. Um, both Dave and, uh, well, both Daves, <laughs> Dave Raffensperger and um, Dave Puzon, you know, were, were great to work with. I just, I sent them sketches of what I wanted. And, um, you know, they both, uh, you know, gave me some feedback, made some improvements. Um, I had originally, I had originally placed this, uh, <laughs> placed this, uh, ferro rod holder, um, horizontally. I don't know what I was thinking when I did that, but I, I placed it horizontally and Dave came back to me and said, 
Uh, horizontally is not really going to work. Um, let's let's place it vertically, and vertically works excellent. Uh, uh, and most of most of my sheaths, even the ones with the um, uh, with the attachable ferro rod holders, you know, a lot of them have the the snap or the you know the, the screw on the end. I, I keep them in the center um, and not on the not on the outside. Uh, I guess in the honey badger, it's on the outside, but that's just simply the way. Uh, you know, that's simply the way the Kydex is, and I, I can't help that. But, um, you know, I, I prefer it in the center. It takes up, you know, it's, it takes up less space. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just a smaller footprint. And, um, you know, especially if you're fly fishing, you know, fly line catches on everything. And so you want to keep things, you know, you don't want to have things protruding and sticking out everywhere. Um, so anyway, I've rambled on here for about four and a half, five minutes. Uh, time for me to get dressed and get some food. I'm heading up to the lake, and it looks like we've got quite a bit of snow up here. And I am without my snowshoes. I'm at Saddlebag Lake. The plan is to head up to Conus. There's a bit more snow than I anticipated. It's, uh, it's warm, but it's a bit breezy. So the wind chill factor um, is coming into play. So it's been pretty fair going so far. Um, the snow is making it a little bit easier to make my way. It's you know filling in all the all the uh, all the valleys and um, uh, all the rocky terrain. Um, on the flip side, where it's soft. Uh, you know, my leg, my feet are just falling through, and I, I've, I've already fallen up to my leg um, in one section. But it's still early. I mean, it's nine, nine thirty. So um, if I can, you know, if I can get to the lake with uh, hard packed snow, all the better. Well, I'm on solid ground right now for the time being. That last patch was uh, a little tough. It's pretty. It was it was really icy, and um, you know, for those of you that don't that don't hike in these conditions, you know, what you're really looking for is a balance between crusty and soft snow. You know, something that you can get purchase, but your you know, your feet aren't gonna, aren't gonna fall in more than a couple inches. But that last patch, I, I couldn't I couldn't dig into the snow at all. So a change of plan may be in order. The snow's getting pretty deep. Um, the snow's getting deep. Uh, uh, my feet are getting cold. And there are plenty of lakes to fish here. So instead of heading up to the glacier, I may, I, I may just hit some of the lowland lakes. And lowland, I mean, I, I mean, I'm still at 10,000 feet, but there's a valley, and then there are some lakes that are up on the ridge. There are a lot of golden trout lakes in here, um, and there's actually one that's got some really big fish in it. So maybe I'll head there. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's taken me an hour to get where I am now. Normally, um, normally it only takes 30 minutes. So. Yeah, let me get over this ridge and then see what the conditions are. Uh, but I, I may have to punt. So that's where I plan to be going. Um, right on the top of uh, that bluff. And, whoa. Ugh. Typically, um, what I do is I come, I, you know, I skirt across this. And then those trees over there. I go to the right of those trees and then up the granite and what is normally uh, a granite face is um, all snow. Uh, contrast that to this side of the valley and there's hardly any snow at all. Uh, there is a, a trophy trout uh, lake on this side of the valley and uh, I've never done very well there, but uh, I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to, there's a lake just over this rise, you can't see it. I think I'm going to go there, check out that lake, see if I can find any cruising fish. 
um, take a look at the creek that joins this lake and the larger lake and see if I can pick fish up there and then head over um, to the other side of the uh, of the valley. Uh, I can come back here in a couple weeks, you know, when this is uh, <laughs> when this is a little bit more hospitable, or when my buddy Roger returns my snowshoes. Okay, that was just ridiculous. I was falling through the snow with every step up to my leg. Um, without snowshoes, that's just that's asking for trouble. I mean. Um, especially trying to get up to the lake. Uh, my feet are frozen. Um, fortunately, I, I should have some extra socks in my in my bag, so I'm going to go ahead and put those on. I've made it to the across the lake and the first lake, as I was saying, but it's uh, it's iced over. So it's a good bet that those other lakes are probably still iced over as well. Um, so there really is no point in me going up there. Maybe they may have iced out because, I mean, the wind's the, it's pretty, been pretty windy. Um, but uh, I just, it's just not, um, it's, I just don't think it's conducive to me going up there and having a good day of fishing. So here's the first lake that I come to. Um, you can see right where this line of, of bushes are, that's the stream. There's the uh, the outlet there, and that's sort of ice free. But you can see the rest of the lake above it. It's got some ice. What I normally do is I normally take this trip, this trail over here, um, go to the far side. There's an inlet creek which has great fishing for really for, for big brook trout. Um, and if the snow wasn't so deep and soft, I'd probably try to get over there and, and, and fish the creek. But I don't know. We'll see. Uh, when I get to the, when I get to this creek, if it looks like the shoreline is clear enough for me to get over there, maybe I'll try to get over there. Um, but then my route takes me up through these trees, and then so you go up along the trees up to about here, and then you go up the granite, and then you cut off, you cut over, and what is now a snowshoe up to the top, and the lakes are, are up there. Um, so I, I just don't think it's uh, it's wise for me to, to do that today, especially since I'm by myself, frozen feet. But it's a beautiful day, and uh, you know I've, this this is not called the Twenty Lakes Basin for nothing. So um, there's you know it's, 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 uh, there's, there's there are more lakes to choose from, and uh, I'll continue on. So I'm on the other side of the creek. Um, <sighs> Unfortunately, I had to make a wet creek crossing, and man, this is cold. Um, <sighs> but now on the other side of the valley, um, it's a lot warmer, it's a little drier. Uh, we'll see how things are on those other other lakes. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, frogs, it's a bit windy, but uh, maybe the mountain yellow-legged or the red-legged frog. Uh, two frogs that are native to the Sierra have been in decline. Um, Forest Service has been trying to restore them to their native habitat over the last 10 or 15 years and in doing so have uh, gill netted quite a few trout lakes. So, I've made it to the other Golden Trout Lake, and of course there's a huge mound of snow. 
And I know, I mean, I can, I mean, looking at the topography and just having been here before, I know that there's a, there's a really deep, really deep crevice in there somewhere. And I don't know, do I, do I risk going across? I mean, I can see, I can see some of these holes that are there and they already look like they're a good four feet deep. And I can see way out there that, you know, it just continues on. Just not sure it's worth the risk. I, I, I've not, I've not fished here enough to know exactly where it starts getting deep or, you know, where the, um, where the crevice starts. out in that direction. Okay. Well, I just don't think I'm going to get to that lake. It looks relatively easy until you actually go down and look at the situation. That looks like an easy place to cross there, but the snow there has got to be six feet deep and it's really soft. Um, the main portion there is essentially runoff. Um, I tried to go, I took a couple steps out and uh, what I soon realized was that underneath was really, it was just melted snow. I mean, it was just a wet slush. And so if you fell through, that would just be nasty. Um, it looks like the, 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 the lake is just icing out. So, eh, you know, fishing might be good. Anyway, I started coming up this ridge I know that there are lakes on the other side, but I, ha I haven't fished those lakes in like 20 years. So um, if I can get through there, I mean, you can see how the, the topography kind of uh, zigs and zags and dips. Um, if I can get through there without finding a big pocket of, uh, uh, you know, a little snow lake, then I'll fall to fall. Otherwise, just gonna head back. There is a, that lake down there, which I pass on the way. It's a brook trout lake. It's completely clear. Um, there were a couple guys that were following me, and then, then they saw this and they turned around. So uh, presumably they went back to fish that lake, and I may do the same. Forget to take time to take in the view, especially always look behind you. Never fail to look back at where you came from. So that's where I originally came from. Hiked around the lake. I was going up there. That up there, that is the that's the Conus Glacier. But instead, I crossed the creek, came along here. And then zigzag my way up that uh, up that steep bluff. Um, now it's highly likely that when I get up here, um, these lakes are going to be frozen. But we'll see. Um, I'm going to try to shield the mic from the wind. Um, here's a better view of where I was going. I said that is. That's the Conus Glacier, and the lakes are right about there. Um, and what you can't see really is there are a half dozen lakes right in here. Um, whoa! I'm almost at the top of this bluff here, and I'm hoping. It'll be an easy shot down into the lakes and I'm not going to have to go up another saddle. If I have to go up another saddle, I'll probably just turn around and fish that one. That other lake, because this is, this is a lot of work. <laughs> Good way down there. 
fish in there. So I've come back down to the lake that I passed earlier. If I remember correctly, it's a small brook trout lake. Uh, I already caught a brookie in the creek earlier, but uh, uh, we'll see. You know, I mean, just because something's known as a small brook trout lake doesn't mean that it doesn't necessarily have big fish in it. Uh, it looks like I'll probably be able to access about half of the lake. And my concern is, you know, you guys are probably thinking, oh, well, you know, snow, what's the big deal? Well, my concern is being alone. Um, you run into stuff like that. So like right here, where you've got, the sh you've got the shoreline covered with snow, right? And you can see that snow is, you know, it's iced over and it's, and it's come out into the lake. You know, walking over stuff like that, not knowing, um, and having it fall out from underneath you is what I'm concerned about. And then, you know, stuff like this down here, you know, you see that, uh, you see that overhang? Um, there are a lot of, there's a lot of runoff, there are a lot of creeks here, and, you know, they, they create tunnels. And, um, you just don't know, you know, how high above the creeks you are, and, uh, you don't really know, you know, how deep the snow is, and in some cases it's really, you know, it's, 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 it's really slushy, and, you're, and as you're walking on top of it, you can see that, you know, underneath you is a couple feet of just really, really slushy water. Um, and that's the last thing I want, uh, is to fall into some water, especially being out here alone. Um, so, always better safe than sorry. I'm going to give this place a shot. We'll see how it goes. So I've been fishing this lake for about 15 minutes or so. I'm not seeing any fish. Um, the water's crystal clear. I'm not seeing any, any active fish. Um, I've done some prospecting. Um, there's a... An inlet right there. Um, I think it's probably just mostly runoff, but uh, I'm gonna head head over there and see if I can find some active fish. And so I've hiked around the lake, and I finally found a fish. Um, I'm not gonna be able to get to him where he is, but. Um, at least I know there are fish here. Uh, you know, with, with these high Sierra lakes sometimes, and the gill netting is not fine for the preservation of the frog I mentioned earlier, you never really know whether you're gonna get into a lake that has fish or not. Um, so, I saw one, that's encouraging. It's been about, yeah, it's been about five hours since I, since I hiked in here, and I've only fished for maybe, maybe 30 minutes. I'm at the inlet, and sure enough, third cast, a uh, nice little brookie here. So uh, that's uh, it's a good start. And another brookie. This one's a little better size. Really healthy. Some some shoulders on this one. I've been fishing the inlet now for about 25 or 30 minutes. Fishing's been really good for 8 to 13 inch uh, brook trout. Um, I've hooked a fish on nearly every cast. Uh, I'm taking a break now um, to warm up, you know, landing all those fish. My gloves have gotten wet, my hands have gotten really cold, they started to burn, so um, that's a good indicator that I need to stop and, and warm up. I put on an extra layer, I put on a heavier hat. Um, yeah, the wind is the wind is really doing a number. Um, tomorrow is supposed to be a warmer day, so I'm really looking forward to to that. <laughs> um, hopefully, it won't be as windy uh, as it is today. So the clouds are starting starting to come in, um, and the temperature, of course, is dropping because the sun's going away. So I've moved down the bank a little bit on that on that lake, and. Um, I'm picking up fish, but not, not of the same quality, and the clouds are starting to move in. So I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna head back to the car.
I'm back at the lake and I'm just gonna head back to the car. I'm not gonna fish. But uh, came across Forest Service cabin. It says Wilderness Ranger Private Residence. Mono Lake. So I'm heading back to the car. I'm using the trail opposite of the one that I that I came in. And the west side of the lake is closer to the lakes that I had planned to fish, and so it's a faster hike. Um, but the east side has less snow, so I'm going back the east side because I don't I don't fancy going through all that snow again. So just uh, stopped to take off some layers, change my hat. Um, I'm heating up on the hike a little bit. I got quite a ways to go. As you can see, there's the dam that I crossed earlier. And you can see how snowbound the opposite side is behind me. That's what I had to come through this morning. But ahead of me is that. So fairly benign, a little bit of climbing. Should be fun. Almost there. Back at Casa de Rafour, I'm going to get to a lower elevation, um, warm up a bit, and uh, change clothes and I think go to dinner. It's, uh, it's about 4.30. By the time I get into town, after, after I change, it'll probably be about 5.30. So i catch some dinner and hang out in town for a while and then come back and uh, hit the sack early. <laughs> 